Here comes Saba. Saba Askarov. Um, I've never worn one of these before. Sorry. Okay. Um, so my name is Saba. I'm originally from Ethiopia, and I am co-founder of the African Chamber of Commerce here in St. Louis. Um, we, our mission is just to help develop African professionals and business owners in the St. Louis area. So when I'm not doing that, I am out meeting people over coffee, getting to know people, going to random events, you know, and just seeing who I can connect to who. So that's why I'm here. I want to be a better MVC, because right now I'm like a mildly valuable connector. <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, outside of that, I'm also here to introduce our nine pal panelists of the day. So let's get started. Our first one is Cynthia Carell. Hello, everyone. So I'm Cynthia Carell. I'm a communication architect, and I'm a partner at Experts for Entrepreneurs. I also head up the leadership team. And we are a community for business owners. How many business owners are here? So I'm a business owner, and I hate to fly alone. Does anyone like to fly alone? No, that's not fun. So what we do at E4E is we're all about learning. And we have a tremendous uh, variety of programs that we offer, and we meet every month. Um, I've actually heard someone, overheard someone say that what we do is we give away trade secrets. So that's because we're very transparent, we love to help each other, we're all about collaboration. And for anyone, has anyone visited eFree? Cool. Well, those of you who have not, we'd love to invite you. Your first time is free, and we hope you'll join us. And by the way, we're eight years old this year. Yeah. Bill Kinnett is our founder, and one of the things I love about E3 is that we're continually improving our program and changing it, so if you haven't been for a while, come back and see what we're doing now. When do you meet? We meet at the Business Lodge, hey, thank you, you. Yeah. at third Wednesday of the month from 8.30 to 10.30. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Cynthia. Our next panelist is Brian Goldman. She said that wrong. It's the Brian. Good morning, evening. I have no idea. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Brian Goldman. I run the Northwest Chamber of Commerce. If you're not familiar with us, please check us out. Uh, it's a different kind of chamber. On paper, I'm the 22 cities around the airport, but my whole concept was, don't join because you're north, join because it's the place to do business. I live in Grief Corps, I work in St. John. Generally, unless you work from home, it's very rare that you live and work in the same municipality. So in the 1800s, it made sense. Let's build our community and blah, 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 and that's great. Now you go where the money is. I used to own a sign company. I was in Bridgeton. Someone from South County called, my fat ass is getting in the car and I'm driving to South County. You go where the money is. So created a chamber that way, and now they come from everywhere, north, south, east, west, St. Peter, St. Charles, Chesco, Clayton, Lee, May, Fenton, all over the place. Uh, 47 businesses come over from Illinois. So we are not the biggest chamber out there. I'm smaller than both of the next two chambers about to come up. They are amazing. They are everything professional you want in a chamber. I am not. <laughs> This me, take or leave it, shorts, flip-flops, tie-dye every day of the year. If it gets negative 10, I might put on socks. Other than that, I'm anti-pants. I don't like them. I don't like suits. This is who I am, and our chamber reflects it. We have a really good time. We are purely a networking chamber. If you want to come network, please feel free. Hit our website and come check us out. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please, the queen of all social media, Mishmash. Thank you, darling. Um, hi, I'm Mish Hancock, and I, I kind of have a Mish universe, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about everything I do. I am the CEO of 100th Monkey Media. We're a social media company. I have a podcast called Mishmash Podcast. 
speaker career, launching next month. And then um, I'm also the co-founder of TEDx Gateway Arts here in St. Louis. So TED Talk fans? Yes. Yes. Right? Okay, so we're your local TED. Um, we are an independently organized TED group. And what we do is we bring that TED experience here to you guys to enjoy. We're a little bit different than other TEDx's in that we like to feature people from our city. We like to show off St. Louis and show off our area. So everybody on our stage is somehow connected to our area. Um, we also are a little bit different in that we don't only produce events. We really are building a community and we're building an inclusive and equitable community of innovative people, which I'm sure all of you are, so come check us out sometime. But thank you, love you. This will be fun. Who's next? <laughs> next we have Lori Kelly. St. Louis County Chamber of Commerce. I'm just like Brian, but I wear heels. <laughs> um, we encompass, um, like I said, eight of our municipalities in West St. Louis County. We focus on um, education at our general membership meetings, as well as networking. Um, we have big events. Uh, go to our Facebook page. We've got a lot of support that we give our businesses. Um, so yeah, come see the chamber. Thank you, Lori. Um, next, we have Dan Lewis. Good afternoon. Thank you, Lori. All right, so Dan Lewis, I'm representing Mastermind St. Louis, so thank you all for coming. Um, I guess what we do, you won't see a table out there or anything for us. Our main couple places where you can look for us and find us is. Uh, Mastermind St. Louis on Eventbrite. You can find we meet third Thursday of every month, and we meet at uh, Orlando Gardens at 270 in Dorset. Many have showed up to Orlando Gardens in South County. I don't know what happens there on the third Thursday at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so we're the third Thursday. Uh, we start at 10, however, doors open about 9.30, uh, so feel free to get there early. Um, it's a free event. We don't charge any money. We don't have a Organized attendance list. There's no attendance policy. It's come as you are, have fun. Um, we kind of teach people how to improve yourself and also improve your business. So we work on two philosophies. Our overall philosophy is help change the way business is done in our St. Louis community. So a long time ago, people used to brag about being a go-getter, and rather you be content and happy about being a go-giver and helping others first, um, using the words we and us as opposed to I and me, and just helping lift others up. And uh, kind of that's what that's what we're about. Um, started on the book, Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer. There's a handful of us that used to meet together, and now there's about two or 350 people that meet once a month, and not the same amount of people. There's about 70 occupations, and we've had around 9,000 different people come over the years. So if you're interested in any of that information, uh, swing by on the third Thursday. Thanks, Dan. Our next panelist is Brian Lunt. Hello, everybody. I guess I get to welcome you all here because you're in Medici Media Space. So a little bit about Medici is that we're set up as a co-working space. We've got a lot of really fun things here. We've got studio spaces and conference rooms and office spaces that folks can go into. Uh, we often joke that we want to be the city museum for business because we want to have a lot of creative things that go on. And we want to have the backgrounds that you need for any kind of media project. So we have a Scotland room, if you've seen that. It's one of our theme spaces. We have a lot of different backgrounds, a fitness studio, and uh, some other areas. In here, at one time, we had this kind of four corners concept going where I had like an Oprah set and a Jay Leno set and a comedy and a Charlie Rose set. So lots of different fun things that you can do. Just point your audience the way you want to go. But uh, we are very collaborative in the way that we work together. We bring everybody in in a strategy session model. Uh, we invite new guests to come on Monday mornings. And uh, we really find out a way that we can help businesses 
we can get you into uh, whatever network you need to be in in order to uh, move yourself forward, or we invite you in as a, as a community member. We have a lot of community members in the audience and up on the panel, and so thank you guys for coming. We're really glad to have you here. Thanks, Brian. Our next panel is Tyler Matthews. Hello. Tyler, with the Executive Director of Venture Cafe St. Louis. So Venture Cafe St. Louis is uh, a gathering that we host every Thursday from 3 to 8 p.m. at the Cortex uh, District. Uh, it's by the IKEA, if you're not familiar. Um, and the whole purpose for us is to get innovators together to make things happen. Um, we believe strongly in building a community that's um, uh, that, of creative people, of entrepreneurs, and that can uh, build, you know, bounce ideas off of each other share their ideas, get feedback from others, and um, hopefully find new collaborations, new business partners, uh, clients, um, or even just side projects. Uh, we have about 10 to 14 free educational sessions every, every week on Thursday, and um, it's really just a place to come and learn and, and hopefully help take your, your business or your idea to the next level. We also do this uh, the third Tuesday of each month at the Dan Ford Center, um, helping them build their innovation community. And uh, we'd love to have you come out. It's free. And there's also, you know, some free beverages, which makes things uh, a little uh, kind of nice. But really, it's, it's about building a community and, um, and learning. So thanks for, thanks for having me. Thanks, Tyler. All right, Hi, everybody. My name is Virginia Mooskis, and I'm with Master Connectors and B&I in America. When I was 12 years old, I bought my very first journal. And my, the very first words I ever wrote in a journal were, I hate my dad. <laughs> he loves his business more than he loves us. And I think that's what colored my life's work, which is basically to help businesses create an on-demand referral stream that allows them to build a business that fuels their passions, funds their dreams, and has a massive impact on the community they serve, all while keeping their priorities in perspective. And uh, so that's why I'm here today, is to talk to you guys a little bit about that. Thank you, Virginia. Our final panelist is Erin Williams. Hi, everybody. I'm Erin Williams. Um, I have the pleasure of representing the Ohio Island Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Um, a little bit about our chamber. We were named as the 2017 Association of Chamber of Commerce Sex Chamber of the Year. Um, and in 2016, we were the Missouri Chamber of the Year for a large market. So we're extremely proud of our organization. Um, we really focus on a couple things for our members, um, businesses which are um, educating our members to run their businesses more effectively and efficiently, um, networking our businesses together so that obviously, uh, you're building those relationships and being able to pass that information on, and then advocating on uh, behalf of businesses for pro-business public policy, which sounds very boring, but um, it's actually kind of fun. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we do. We also work uh, quite a bit with um, the manufacturing community on workforce development issues um, and professional development for our um, emerging workforce and hopefully the folks that are gonna you know, let you retire. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for being here, taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. So um, our guests wrote down a few questions, and anyone can answer them. Um, we'll start with the first one. First question is, how do you learn catchy phrases to sell or promote your product? <laughs> anyone want to take that one? How do you learn catchy phrases to sell or promote your product? I just create them. <laughs> <laughs> Ask other people their opinions, what they think. Okay, I think as you talk to people, what ends up happening is you start to formulate in your mind a really, you'll see the sparkle in someone's eye. You'll, you'll explain something and they'll think, you'll see them go, now I get it. And they'll think, okay, file that one away. Got to use that next time. Because, and you know, what I do with social media as an example, it's still like this really weird thing to people. 
and, and I'm, I'm an older person, and most of my clients tend to be older, and so I'm a safe bridge for them into that social media realm. So I have to figure out ways to take, here's what you used to with marketing, and you used to understand it, and it was, you know, you got it, and now this is what you're doing with social media. So it's using the, you, you figure out as you go along, file away and write down, these are my sound bites, these are my sound bites. Have the sound bites and that's how I explain to people what I'm doing. That's how I do it, that helps. I think the best sound bites, which is a great notion, come from your client customer testimonials. If you start collecting those, if you listen to what your clients and your customers are saying, that's where you can grab those nuggets. I, um, I also think that if you're looking for nifty sound bites to, to talk about your product or your service, that your focus is, is in the wrong direction. So if you're like really like, how do I make that chair sexy? Well, the chair is just a chair. There's nothing really super and super juicy about the chair. What the deal is is you got to really focus on what what is the what is the problem, the top of mind problem that somebody who might want your product or service. What do they what do they need? And then how do I address that in a very simple, easy to understand way? So the best sound bites to me are the solution focused ones. So. Um, if I say to you, on-demand referrals, you go, oh yeah, that's what I want. So there's your sound bite. It's what do you want? What is the person that's with you want? And again, I think Cynthia's right on the money. If you say to your clients, why do you do business with me? What is it that you want? What's the outcome I provide? They'll give you the results-based sound bite that will then enable you to attract people to your business. I just wanted to kind of add on that um, when, you're, when you're talking with people, um, having that that specific driver. Um, so if you say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm um, in advertising. Okay, what's your niche? Like, what are what are you focusing on, and what what are you looking for? And just having kind of those more specific areas, especially if you're in something that might be very broad. Um, you know, social media marketing might be more specific, but if you're in real estate, okay. Or are you in, you know, residential real estate or, you know, whatever it may be in whatever area specializing in this um, helps to give people a better idea of what you're doing when you're first meeting them. Awesome. Uh, next question is, I'm not getting enough referrals. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> most, were you here for the <laughs> You know, most, most people forget to ask for referrals. That can be one of the easiest things. I will just quickly say, when it comes to referrals, networking, of course, is huge, but I, you have to do offline and online. And I really do feel that if you're doing both of those things, you will get referrals. So offline is what you're doing today. You're going around, you're going to meetings, you're shaking hands. Online or running campaigns. You know, so we run, our company runs really successful LinkedIn campaigns. We run campaigns through Facebook. You want to get those warm leads that come to you, and then it's your job to sell it, but at least you're getting the warm leads to come into you. And it's that perceived indifference. I know Mastermind talks about that, is asking the question, if you were to give a referral to your business, who would that be and why? And if, if they don't have an answer, then say, well, I would like to be that referral source for you. Is that okay? Um, and just inviting that that knowledge that yeah, we want. I want to be referred. So if you were going to join a chamber, don't join those two. Join mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should join all of them. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Pretty cool that you're all three here. Um, so yeah, the question is, uh, why am I not getting enough referrals? Um, I might ask them, well, how many referrals are you giving? And change that. Well, zero. Cool, so you're getting a reciprocal amount. That works great. Um, another thing would be is, you know, how much value are you getting? How much are you focused on the other person? Um, you know, what, what are you giving to the world? And if you're not giving that much, why would you expect much in return? Um, if you're really good at what you do, uh, professionally, 
and then also really good at helping others, you will get that many referrals. One of the key things could be using words like Lori was talking about. You don't even need that if you're foundationally a really good person focused on helping others, and you're also professionally very good and very competent there as well. So I would think probably the problem uh, Jacko Willink says uh, extreme ownership probably, probably starts with you first, and maybe building yourself up, doing some affirmations, things like that. So um, I can go on for a long time, but I'll let somebody else talk. <laughs> So at Medici, we like three ways. Um, what we mean by that is that we are convinced that, that we're better at selling other people. <laughs> we're convinced that uh, we're better at selling other people than ourselves. And so one of the things that we recommend is always having somebody as an advocate at a meeting that you have. And so we like to have uh, meetings that have at least three people in them, so that whenever you're talking about somebody's services, you have an advocate there for you. So I would recommend going out to folks that you've worked with and using them as an advocate to help uh, with referrals. For me, I'm not a big fan of rules. I know, figure that one out. Um, but I do have two rules that we use at the chamber. And one is, and, and again, I'm basing this off chamber networking. Don't sell to the room, sell through the room. Your job is just to make sure that people know who you are, what you do, so they know what you're looking for and how to refer you. My other rule is, be a farmer, not a hunter. Come to our stuff, plant seeds, build relationships, let it grow, you'll have these people forever. If you come to a chamber thing and you're that aggressive, hey, what do you do? Here's my card, you might do this. <laughs> then I have to have a talk with you. One of us won't be here anymore, but I still will be. So <laughs> those two rules, but literally, I watch these never Don't sell to the room, just sell through the room. You don't have to do pressure. If you don't like it. You don't like when people come to pressure you in sales. Why would you turn around and do it to others? So just relax. And, and being a resource, really. If you can be seen as the resource for um, the other people in the room, and then everybody starts to affiliate your name with that industry. So as much as you can give back and you can um, help people, um, you know, present and be very factual or, uh, you know, what are you giving? What are you uh, referring back to? Um, if you're that resource and helping to connect people, helping to give those referrals, and then being that industry person, um, those are going to come. Yes, all that. <laughs> and, no, seriously. So if you want to get referrals, and Dan and I were just talking about this back there when we were making all that noise and getting in trouble. Um, what it's, it's a mindset and a heart set. So what everybody here has kind of addressed is the heart set, right? Like, be nice. Like, be nice. Don't be selfish. Don't push your stuff on people. Um, you know, we're offering, we may be offering what we sell, but just because you perceive that someone has the problem that you solve, it doesn't mean that they own that problem quite yet. And so you get perceived as a pushing obnoxious instead of someone, no, but I'm just trying to help them. But it's also a mindset, and it's also a skill set. So you've got your skill set, your mindset, and your heart set. And I think one of the things is that that skill set, you've got a niche, because if you try to market everything to everybody, you will sell nothing to anyone. Um, so you've got to have a niche, and you really have to have something unique about yourself. You've got to know how to sell yourself instead of your stuff, because where the value comes in is what I add past whatever my stuff provide. So if I join a chamber and the chamber has all these great things going on, the value is the connection with the director or the connection with the people and what that brings added to me beyond what I paid for. Um, really understanding that you want to you have a team of people. You're creating a team. So when you're creating a team, if you're trying to put together a baseball team or whatever, how would you act if you're trying to attract a, a great team of people around you? Well, act like a person who people want to hang out with. And then understanding tools and how you train people and being able to track what you're doing and and weaving in the, the expectations and the agreements for reciprocity. So it's a skill set, it's a mindset, and it's a heart set. And if you don't have all three of those things, then the way to find more referrals is figure out which one you, you need first. And I'm gonna argue that your heart set comes first, your mindset comes second, and then you need a skill set past that. And to that, remember the word sell. So when you go to any networking event, you sell. And I've made a new acronym for it. Heart, 
You smile, engage, listen, and learn. That's genius. Did somebody write that down? <laughs> You're going to make t-shirts and sell them out here for $25. Just let me know. I'll take your card. That's very helpful, guys. Very helpful. Um, so our next question is, have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, how have you coped or overcome it? So imposter syndrome, I think what you're referring to is when you feel maybe inferior to others. Um, I've got the microphone up here today. Uh, I could feel like an imposter or I could just be comfortable in my own skin. I can tell you five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, um, actually, this was seven years ago I joined Virginia's BNI organization and in that organization you're required to stand up and say your name and what job you're in. Totally didn't even want to do that. <laughs> And seven years later, I'm here. So here's here's a way where you can feel like you're not an imposter. Uh, like they were talking about, you know, do your job. Um, get confident in your job and those type of things. But in addition to that, I brought this book. I wasn't sure if I would talk about it today or not. In this book, six years ago, I wrote the words, I am worthy. And I repeated those every morning, every day, multiple times so that I no longer felt like an imposter. I wanted to feel like I belonged. After a while, not only was I worthy, and I felt like I could call Aaron Williams at the Chamber of Commerce on her cell phone after hours, or call Virginia, or uh, talk to Lori, you know, those type of things. So I was worthy, and uh, things started happening, and then I added the words of success. So all of a sudden, my business coming in made me actually feel uncomfortable because I was doing more than I thought I should be at the time I was supposed to be doing it. I was exceeding my goals by so much. So I just adapted my, um, my mentality, my thoughts, and started to accept abundance and come from the space of abundance. And then I, uh, at that same time, I had a bunch of other, other things. So maybe I was a terrible time blocker back in the day. Maybe still am. Uh, but I wrote, I'm a, I'm a great time blocker. I wrote, I am a referral generating machine. I'm a money making machine. In capital letters I wrote, I am happy. If any of you ever had a job where you weren't making any money, maybe you weren't happy at that point in time, but by gosh, I was gonna smile all the time everywhere I was and I was gonna be happy. I am organized. I am blessed by God always. Ask for God's help whenever needed or whatever, even you don't think you need it. So those were all the things that I wrote down back in the day, and I kept adding to it, and every morning I went to that, and that's where my day started. And every day was great, because it started there. So that's how you can go from feeling like an imposter to feeling comfortable in your own skin. I guarantee you this wasn't even possible for me to think to be up here now, seven years ago. I didn't even want to say my name and what occupation I was in publicly. So, next question. Nobody gets to talk. That was awesome. Okay. Oh, you weren't kidding. Okay. Did anyone else have something to say? Can I? I'll add something to that too, uh, because I think a lot of people suffer from this, and I suffer from it. Uh, and I did a lot uh, until I did my first startup. Um, because there's so much rejection in doing your own business, you kind of like, it's really good to do a business because it helps you get past the rejection of saying, of hearing no all the time. But um, everyone suffers from imposter syndrome, even the people who are, who you think are top talent, the best in their, their field. Um, everybody is stumbling upward. <laughs> like everyone's just making it up. Like literally. Uh, so, it's just like you were saying, I think it's continue to work hard um, and just uh, know that everyone's getting told no also. And then, but the people that don't get held down by hearing no are the ones that keep going. They're really no better than anyone else in this room. They just kept going. That's really what it, what it ended up doing, uh, the difference. Hi, um, so there's a, there's a, I'm going to use a big word, ontological principle, a theory of being, like how you show up in the world. And it basically sounds like this. If you spot it, you got it. 
So the only possible way that you could think that you have imposter syndrome is because you see someone else and think, oh, she's so much more talented and prettier and smarter and successful and fabulous, right? Like, so everything you're admiring in that person, you actually already have within you because if you didn't have it within you, you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it. So the challenge is, is when you're having imposter syndrome, which means you're seeing yourself reflected in someone else, you're actually rejecting who you are and what, what the, the God-given sparks that are within you. So the mechanism that I use to get over that, because you're totally right. Like every morning we all wake up and think, oh my God, like all these people are going to look at us and think we're like we got our stuff together and we don't have it together, but we have to like glue it together with duct tape and then we like show up, right? Really, just like duct tape it up. Um, yeah, it's not crazy. <laughs> so here's the deal. So write down all the stuff that you see in the other people that make you feel inferior, and then ask yourself, what one thing could I do today that looks like that thing? So if someone is articulate, and you admire that, but you don't feel articulate, you saw it, which means you have it, what one thing could you do to show up as articulate today and then go make it your business to do that one thing? And right? write it down. And write it down. Articulate. Right. And here's what it looks like. I'm articulate. Here's what it looks like. I'll do that thing. Because most people think that your thoughts, like your thoughts come first. But if you use the reverse, which is you do the action, then you'll get the feeling and then the thought will happen. You, you know, you, the thoughts become thing, but your actions can, can do that too. So if you just behave articulately every day, then you will then begin to feel articulate. Does that make sense? So if you see it, you already have it in you. It is your God-given birthright to own that characteristic, and it's just now it's just your challenge to behave your way into the demonstration of that. So um, I think everybody struggles with you know find, being comfortable in your own skin and uh, and it's just what we put outward uh, that other people see. Facebook always gives you know cracks me up because you see all these people with this perfect life and you're like that's such crap um, <laughs> because everybody's got you know skeletons in the closet and things to deal with the stresses of life and whatever else it is. I think it's funny I got this amazing dose of uh, wisdom from one of my buddies who's a Total screw up, but I was just like, where did this come from? Uh, it was back in college when I was, you know, just frustrated that I wasn't finding the right gal to spend my life with. And, and uh, he said, you know, if you just keep being yourself and doing the things that you like to do and enjoying your life, eventually she'll just show up. And I was like, man, that is really good advice. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, but that's what I started doing. I started just being myself and doing the things I like to do. And all of a sudden, this gal showed up. And I'm like, hey, do you like doing this stuff? I like doing this stuff. And, you know, been married 12, 13 years, somewhere around there. So I think that's a very good lesson. Just do the things that are authentic to you and uh, your tribe and your people will show up. That's awesome, guys. So the next question is, what's the best way to identify the style of someone you meet? Are you talking about what Art was talking about? Communication, communication style? Yeah. Um, Ask questions. Just, just whoever wrote the question. <laughs> Stand up, Chris. What, what do you mean? So I meet somebody at a networking meeting. I'm not going to give them a disc assessment, but how can I know how they best want to be communicated with? Ask. Ask them is one. Yeah. The, the easiest thing to notice is pace. So, um, Let's do this. I am a fast-paced person. No. No. <laughs> Dan is a slower-paced person. Yeah. So can't be slow. That's not <laughs> slower-paced. Slow as slower pace. Pace, you know, right? So, that's so if you're going to network with Dan, it's probably a good idea to, I don't know, slow down, right? When I hang with Virginia, I speed up. Right? And I slow down and somewhere we meet in the middle. If you're talking to a fast-paced person and you are talking, like, oh, like, no. I, I'm done. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think working, you can, you can, 
if the two easiest things are pace, whether they're slower paced or faster paced, it's observable, you can see it. And then you can you also want to notice are they more people based or more task based? Dan is much more people based, and you know that because he he looked like he looks at you and he nods his head and he leans it. And I'm like, okay, there are four principles that you need to know. And you do one, two, three, and four, and you're in. So that's a task more task oriented person. So fast paced task, talk and sound bites, slower paced people, people, ask questions, listen, let them tell their story. And, and I would also say, and I I've always liked. <laughs> um, but just asking those questions and listening and, you know, not, maybe not diving into trying to communicate what you're, what you're doing, because if you take that time to listen to them talk and ask those questions, get those responses, um, you'll be able to pick up, especially if that's, if you're doing this assessment, you're going to be able to pick up how they're, how they're communicating and what kind of their preferences, how they're oriented oriented, be articulate. <laughs> um, they're just listening. Great. Well, did you want to say something? I would say, if, if you're looking to develop the communication and figure out, I always like to figure out the rhythm and flow that somebody else likes to be communicated with. And these days we have no idea how they want to communicate. Um, I said my work anniversary, so I had a ton of LinkedIn messages. Now I know a lot of people that now use LinkedIn. I can communicate with them through that uh, vehicle. Is it text? Is it Facebook? Is it a phone call? Is it in person? Is it handwritten notes? Is it, you know, what is it to that person? And um, through just observing where they communicate, how they communicate, you'll, you'll probably figure out where, how they like you to communicate with them, for one. Secondly, um, I joked around with ask, but I was serious. You might ask them, hey, when you're reaching out to others, how do you do it? Well, often I email, often I call, often I like to do one-on-ones, often, you know, whatever the case may be. So I'll tell you a quick funny story. A good buddy of mine, Larry Hacker, he runs the Good Dad Project, and he also rents space here at Medici in a co-working space. So I now know Larry doesn't listen to voicemails. <laughs> I now know Larry doesn't listen to voicemails. Would you all like to hear why I know that? Yes. So I had this uh, event, Mastermind St. Louis, and I thought, wow, this would be fantastic if Larry would come up front and be part of a panel and talk about gratitude and his message. And I gave him what his speech would be, and I knew he was going to say yes, and I had heard he was coming for sure because he registered. And I gave him his whole speech. And I said, hey, you don't need to call me back because I know you're busy. And I called on him to come up front for the panel. And he's looking around with this wild-eyed look on his face. And afterwards, he goes, man, that was so cool that you just picked me to come up front. <laughs> and I'm like, that was totally crazy how you talked about all this stuff that I didn't think you were going to talk about. Because I had no idea I was speaking today. Oh. <laughs> so did you ever listen to your voicemail? No. <laughs> I've left him three voicemails since, and he's never gotten any of them. <laughs> yeah, I saw you call. What did you call about? Yeah. So, hey, Larry, do you ever listen to No, I never do. So, <laughs> ask. Right. And you might find out what you think is happening on the other side isn't. I may be like that with email. I'm the um, So one of my uh, yeah. things is I, I like to be genuinely curious about everybody that I talk to. Um, one of my favorite quotes is to, to love God is to see God within everyone. And so I play this little game where, especially when I'm driving, I imagine the person that's just cut me off or that I want to flip off. I'm like, what if that was my grandma? And my grandma was a wild driver. Um, and so, and then I also do that with new people that I meet. I go, what if this was my brother? What, what if this was my sister or somebody that I cared about? What kind of care would I take in listening and understanding what they're doing? And so I think if you can take your time to really listen to what people are saying and be genuinely curious and go a little bit deeper with what they're telling you about, you'll get to those layers that you almost always find something about that person that's very interesting. And so it's uh, it's kind of a little game or an exercise that you go through and just kind of dig, dig into those layers. Great. Um, so our next question is, 
What is the biggest mistake people make networking? <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, you may suffer from RBF. <laughs> Resting bitch face. Resting bitch face. <laughs> so when you go into a room, make sure you're approachable. <laughs> you want to smile and be approachable and yeah, not have RBF. I too sometimes suffer from that. So before, yeah, an event, you have to just open up. So it's being approachable. And the other thing is, is you're not the only one that's terrified in that room to go in and, and just kind of be like, you know what, I'm going to go in. I'm going to meet two people that I, you know, just go up and I don't know. And just it's forcing yourself. It's getting that that affirmation in your head. I'm going to do it. So um, I think one of the things that mistakes that people make in networking is just being that wallflower and not just going for it. Because when you walk in a room and you're like, I'm gonna own it, smile and be like, yeah, people will be attracted to that. Oh, I've gotta meet her, oh, I gotta meet him. Um, and so it's that confidence and it's just building yourself up right before that event. I mean, knowing, and also we, before you go to an event, who are you looking for? That's important. If you're just going into an event, no, you know, I'm here, just here. Um, you got to know who you're there for to meet so you can actually maybe ask somebody. Go into meet the, you know, Aaron, if you're at the O'Fallon Chamber, go to Aaron or an ambassador. You know, hey, I'm looking for some good realtors. Do you, can you help me? Don't be afraid to ask questions and to ask for that referral to say, hey, can you introduce me to, um, the, you know, to George, you know, go up to George. Hey, I'm looking for somebody in this room. Do you know of somebody good? Oh, Virginia. Always ask um, because they'll know and they want to help. Everybody wants to help. I would also say um, something that, that um, we've seen, and I'm sure that everybody else here has seen too, is um, folks that come to a networking function and um, are expecting that. First of all, shotgunning out business cards, don't do that. Um, we know you can do all in one event. Um, and also, you know, really focus on building that relationship. You might not get any business from that event that you went to that day, but it's about building those relationships and planting those seeds and getting to know those people um, because, you know, then you have that relationship, you've become that resource, and they know that they can they can trust you. So it might not be at this event, it might not be at the next event, um, but that build and that uh, familiarity and, you know, just understanding and being able to talk and, and build that really professional relationship um, is, is something mm -hmm. that expert, I would say experts, um, networkers are really good at and understanding rather than just um, I'm going to see how many cards I can get around the room and if I don't get a call uh, an hour after the event then this was a waste of time <laughs> and, and that's just off-putting to everybody that you meet so don't do that I guess for me the the two biggest things that I see longer in networking is first off be present you came to a networking event leave your phone in your pocket or your purse when you're in a networking thing and you're just standing here and your thumbs are flying and you're reading emails and you're reading texts, I mean, right now, my phone's in my pocket. It's going crazy. I'm getting emails. I also backstage want two free hours in Toy Blast. It's killing me not to be on my phone right now. I mean, I'm very honest with everything, okay? I can't because I'm here and I'm being present. The other thing is, right now, we're talking, y'all are listening. That's great. Networking is not a lecture series. It's a conversation. Listen to the other person. The biggest mistake that you watch in networking are the hit and runs or the shotgun business cards. Shoot them out there and, you know, hi, Jamie, I'm Brian, I did this, blah, 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 thanks. Hi, Tron, I'm Brian, I did this. Did I ask Jamie or Tron what they did? No, I didn't care. That's not networking, okay? Have the conversation and actually listen. Lead in with what do you do? What are you looking for? If that person doesn't ask it to you, you don't want to network with them. Move on to someone that actually cares. So I, 
I think some of the best networking I've seen and I've experienced have been not necessarily at networking groups, but when I've gone to some event or a seminar, uh, sometimes I think we forget that going to other uh, types of venues and experiences, whether it's a mastermind or a class or uh, an event like today, you can really do some very strategic networking and make some fabulous connections without that being at the forefront of our minds. So I think I network all the time, even though I don't really realize I'm networking all the time. I have a whole thing about being in the world and it is thinking about in interactions versus transactions. So a transaction is you go to the store, you buy something from the person who's bringing it up and you're just like, hey, yeah, thank you, okay, great, have a day, I'll see you later, you know, and off you go. But an interaction is you are actually speaking to the person that's right in front of you and treating them like a human being. I have a thing that I, I feel like I know everybody anyway, and, and in my head I'm like, we're all family, so we're going to know each other anyway, so let's just talk, what's going on, you know? Um, I had an experience with my husband. We were we were going over to Europe. We were going on a trip together, and the the airports there was a bomb scare and all this stuff. And we ended up being in the airport for like eight hours waiting to get on our flight. And finally, I just gave up. I was like, just let's let's just spend the night at the hotel. We'll get back here tomorrow morning. Well, I was there for eight hours. I was in all kinds of stores, <laughs> and going to the cafes and what have you. The next day, we get to the concourse, and we're walking down the concourse, and I'm. See at the Starbucks people like, well, hey, how's it going? To the magazine people, and my husband's like, what in the heck? I'm here every single week in this concourse. Every week I travel. You're here one day, and everybody's your friend, and they're all waving at you. <laughs> and that's when I realized I, I have interactions with people, not transactions, because I love and adore people, and I really do want to know about who they are and what makes them tick and what. What makes them exciting? It's amazing the stories that your everyday person has. That's kind of how I look at the world and what I do. Mm, I, I also think, that the, because the question was, what's the biggest mistake that we see, right? And um, I, I see two. One is falling in line with what's, what uh, Dr. Ivan Meisner calls the networking disconnect, which it means I showed up at the chamber meeting ready to sell my stuff. And like, did you all make a shopping list? Like, I often say, pull out your list, and like, no one has a list, and someone picks up a list, and I say, what's on your list? And they're like, lettuce, tomatoes, mayonnaise, and I'm like, okay, like, do we have any food wholesalers in the room? Because unless we have a grocer or a food wholesaler, that list is worthless, and nobody makes a list of what they want to go buy when they go networking, yet everyone in the room is constantly selling, and thank you, because now we now we now have a new context for that word, which is, like, super valuable, and you're coming on my podcast, because we're going to blast that all over the universe. Um, so, you know, stop selling your stuff. Stop selling your stuff. Have interactions. Be real. And the other thing that I think people do is they have a terrible case of SIS, which is something that I often suffer from and have to, like, take a dose of medicine every morning, and it's called self-importance syndrome. <laughs> so you walk into a room and you believe that everybody should know who you are and want what you've got, and, you know, like... And, and so you go in, and I, like you, this is me and my mirror, you go in. And so, you know, I do, I do have a tendency to go in and, and, and misstep because I think everything I have to say is so pithy and intelligent and smart and you all want to hear it. And I think what's really important is to understand that if we go into a networking event with the sole purpose of connecting the people in my network to the people in your network. It's not about us. It's about who's behind you that's suffering, that needs a solution, that's in pain. Who's behind me that's suffering, needs a solution, has some pain. And how do we get these people together for the purpose of improving the quality of their life? So when you hear me, when people say, what do you do? I say I'm in the business of connecting the people I meet to the people they need to know. Who do you need to know? Oftentimes the answer is, well, apparently I need to know you. But it's not about me, 
right? And I think so, self-important syndrome is probably the biggest one that I see because it leads us to that perpetual selling, business card throwing, it's all about me. You know, the biggest one that I would see is don't have a preconceived notion of who someone is. Talk to everybody. Oh, you're a financial advisor? Uh, yeah, I, don't, I have one. You don't know who they know or who they're related to. Okay. Oh, real estate, yeah, I'm not moving. It doesn't matter. A real estate person is a gold mine anywhere because they meet new people every day. They know all about what, how much money they make, what they do for a living. Oh, they have an upcoming wedding. Oh, well, you should talk to this photographer. Talk to everybody and don't pre-decide that they wouldn't be a good fit for your network or someone for you to know. <laughs> I want to say one thing to that is that um, so when if you have that kind of you're a financial planner and you know that as soon as you say financial planner people are like yeah 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 shh don't argue right they don't want to talk to you anymore you can come up with a way to quickly get them to listen to you and I call it the telling tell me more statement Jill Stone where are you Jill Stone is <laughs> so Jill Stone she does what's called site selection for meeting planners helping meeting planners find where they are going to. Um, hold their meeting, and as soon as she says this to a meeting planner, I'm a site selection manager, like, yeah, 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 I don't want to talk to you anymore. So Jill and I got together and thought, we got to come up with a way to set you apart, make people want to talk to you. So now when they ask her, she says, oh, I help companies sleep around. <laughs> <laughs> now they stop and go, what? Wait a minute. Oh, I do site selection. Oh, now she's interesting, right? Because she's come up with a way to differentiate herself from all the other site selection managers out there. So if you have that kind of a thing that you do, come up with that tell me more statement and people will pay attention to you a little bit more. I think the question was something about uh, bad networking. Bad networking. <laughs> and maybe not bad networking, but uh, if you're getting into it or you have gone along for a while and have a kind of fear of how many people you need to meet. Um, if you think about it a little bit different way, if you got, say, 10 new contacts a month, 10 new relationships a month, and you did that every month for a year, you'd have 120 new relationships. If you had 120, that's about as many as you can maintain anyway. So you can go from an empty database to a full database within a year if you go to two networking events a week, if you just get one contact from two networking events a week, so you could go into an event, gosh, I've got to sell something. Gosh, I've got to meet 10 new relationships. In reality, you might only need to meet just one. So when you shrink the task down, you can get out of the fear-based mentality and come from an abundant mentality and this stuff can be fun. This stuff can be easy. It's okay to be simple and easy and fun. So you can have fun. It can be happy. So um, if you spend all your time, energy, and effort trying to organize business cards and you know, there's services out there that will type the names and addresses and phone numbers into your database and all that. So all the stuff you don't like about it, remove it all, offload it to somebody else, but just focus on being the relationship person Keep the ones you want, get rid of the ones you don't, spend time where you're happy and who you jive with, and the rest of them, they're for somebody else's business, maybe not yours. And this can be a whole lot of fun, and it's simple. You're going to a not working event. Yeah, yeah absolutely. My wife says, hey, did you work hard today? Yeah, did you work hard today? And I said, I don't take ditches or anything. I don't think I worked at all today. <laughs> all right, guys, that was so awesome. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but you're more than welcome to meet with them afterwards. But you can see that work. Um, let's give everyone a round of applause.